Hey everybody, Nick Dingle here for the next video. We're talking about prefabs in Unity. You'll notice I haven't moved since the last video. It's exactly how I wanted it. What I basically want to talk about is this idea of prefabs, okay? It's short for prefabricated. Now, if you've ever seen new shopping centers or new big buildings being built, you'll notice that what they do is they bring in big chunks of concrete and slabs and things like that that are already made somewhere else. They put them into place and up goes the building in like a week, okay? I saw a hospital in one of my local towns being built in like a month. Obviously, it took a lot more work inside, but the building was up in no time at all. It was amazing how quick they made it. So that's known as prefabs because they make the concrete somewhere else and they bring it in, okay? It's the same idea in games. So I've got this weird enemy that I made in the last video. I'm going to quickly call him enemy by clicking up here, typing in the name and hitting enter. All right, you'll notice that over here in the hierarchy, it's named him enemy as well, okay? And I want to make him a prefab. There's actually a couple of ways we can do that. We can either right-click down here in the assets, create, and then go prefab. There it is there. However, the quickest and easiest way is you can just drag an object from your hierarchy into your assets view. Bloop. And I've now created a prefab. A couple of things you'll notice. First of all, it sort of tries to tell you and show you what your prefab looks like. If I hit the arrow... It shows you all the sub-objects, okay? It doesn't go as far to, you know, showing the sub-sub-objects of the capsule here, but we can see the majority of it. The second thing is, it just turned our object blue, and that's just to indicate to you that you are now working with a prefab. You'll also have these options up here now. Prefab, select, revert, and apply. And it's really important that you do see this, because any changes we make to this prefab, okay, we have to look at what we want to do with it. So I'll talk about what I mean by that in a second. Now that I've got my prefab for our enemy, if I want to create multiple enemies in my world, instead of duplicating this guy, I can just simply whoop, drag him in, drag him in, drag him in, and so forth. You can sit on the pole there, mate. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. And now you'll see that they're all blue. They've all got separate names, but they've all gone blue because they're based on that prefab. So if I want to make a change, let's say I do not like these buck teeth, I can get rid of them. So I'll expand this guy. I'm going to delete. So we'll just, maybe I'll just move them up a little bit or maybe make them, let's make them longer. Make them even stupider. Because why the hell not? Let's leave it like that. Oh my God, I need a directional light in my game. Whew, much better. Okay. So you'll notice that I've changed this guy, but the rest of the prefabs haven't updated with that change, okay? All I need to do now, if I want to apply that change, is simply actually hit apply next to the prefab menu. And every single prefab just got the long tooth. Okay, it doesn't matter where they are, what level they're on, everything just got the long tooth. And if I expand it down here, you'll see that the capsule's got a long tooth on it now, okay? So that's one of the benefits of using a prefab. You make one change, apply it to all of your objects, and they update instantaneously. So if you made an enemy and you're going to make a script for the AI, you can add the script and then apply it to every single object or every single prefab in your game. Okay, That's one of the handy things about it. The second handy thing, let's say I want to make a new level. I'm not going to save these changes. And let's say I want to add some enemies to this level. I can just start dragging them in. I don't have to make them from scratch, make a prefab and then put them in. I just start placing them in my level. So pretty much any object that you're going to be reusing throughout your game, it might be, you know, walls and floors and furniture and things like that. Enemies are a great one. Just create a prefab for them and start dragging them into your world. Okay. And that's pretty damn handy if you ask me. The other two options I haven't talked about, we've got select and revert. Now, the revert's pretty straightforward. Let's say I make a change to this guy. Okay, let's say I move his eye and I go, oh crap, I don't want to do that. Just hit revert, and all the changes you made to that one prefab get undone, and he's back to what the prefab looks like down in your assets. The select just simply highlights where your prefab is in your assets. That's all it is. Okay, so if it's like buried in folders, you can easily go find it. So for example, I've got some prefabs here. If I drag this guy in and I go back and do something else, I go, oh, I forgot where he is. Hit select and it shows you not only the folder, but the actual asset itself. So that's pretty much it for prefabs, guys. I don't want to go into any more detail than that. It's just a very handy feature to use and know about. 
But for the moment, I'm going to move on to the next video, and we're going to start talking about components, okay? And they're incredibly important. But for the moment, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. You know what to do. I'll see you in the next one, everyone.